Hey, welcome back to the shop. Uh, it is Wednesday, June something. Anyway, uh, normally when I do an on the bench video, it's, it's because I'm doing a contract uh, or commission piece. And yesterday I had a small commission that I was working on and I kind of went through it really quickly without shooting any video whatsoever. And now I don't have any commission pieces on the bench. Um, by the way, if you were thinking that you might want me to do something for you, right now is a good time to talk to me because sometimes the wait can be months. And right now the wait is zero days. Um, but the nice thing about that for me is that I can work on personal projects until uh, more commission work comes in. And Normally that means that as soon as I get into doing something I really want to do, more commission work is going to come in. But right now, uh, what I'm working on is this. This is a Dust Tactics slash Dust Warfare uh, medium Panzer Walker. And I'm going to be painting this, and I'm going to be camouflaging it and I'm gonna kind of walk you along my process of doing camouflage and doing some vehicle weathering and otherwise repainting a, uh, um, a vehicle from the Dust Tactics line. And I'm just gonna go and jump right into it. So uh, meet me back here in about two minutes. Uh, so the first thing that you're gonna need to do when it comes to uh, finishing off one of these walkers is to disassemble it as much as you are comfortable disassembling. Uh, luckily a lot of this comes apart really easily. Obviously the arms just pop right out and I've already done this. Uh, these gun shields uh, were just tacked in on the bottom and I just carefully worked the the uh, the piece until the gun uh, the the glue seal broke, and then I was able to get them right off. And obviously for both sides, um, there's another nice thing about getting these things off, and that is that there's really sort of two points that you can position them. Uh, one is back here and one is anywhere in this forward location. They were they were kind of seated uh, here and I kind of, and I'll, I'll explain later why, but I want to put them back this way closer to the gun when I get finished. So those come off. Um, there's really, I'll get that later. <laughs> there's really a lot you can do to take these down depending on how much you want to do. Like I think these ammo drums uh, could come off if you wanted to. Uh, you could probably chop that piece right off there and that'll re release this one pin. Uh, and then they've got some glue probably in here. I'm not going to worry about it. I think this is fine. Um, and then what I did need to go through and do is uh, sand some seams on the guns and then do some filling. And if there's a there's a problem with uh, the kind of pre-assembled nature of these things, it is that uh, how good your model was assembled seems to you know vary quite a bit. I like to think of it as what, was your piece assembled before or after lunch? How close to uh, leaving time was it when when it was done? How many thousands had gotten done prior to uh, that one? Uh, so. Anyway, the, the guns uh, both had uh, seams, pretty, pretty horrid seams uh, on the front and back of the, this portion here. Um, and I wasn't so worried about what was going on underneath and actually it doesn't really seem to be much of a problem. And then the, the barrels themselves had a little bit of a seam that needed to be dealt with and just a little sanding got rid of that. Now the hardest part I think of, of removal was getting this thing off of the base because there was quite a bit of glue on those feet as you can see. And the first thing I did was to pry this thing off of the base and that seems like it would be pretty straightforward but I was afraid of breaking the base so I ended up 
you know, working a tool into it and then uh, um, prying it out. And that gives you access to the pins uh, that hold the feet in place. And I drilled those out, and that sort of got me started. But as you, you know, as I mentioned, there's a ton of glue down there, so I ended up working a uh, an exacto knife underneath, and then sort of prying it up. And eventually, the the feet gave way. And of course, then at that point, getting uh, getting the the hip off is pretty straightforward because they just th these aren't glued. And you can even do this without removing uh, the legs from the base, but this just makes it easier, and you're going to want to do it anyway. Uh, and that sort of opened up another interesting little can of worms because as I was looking at these pieces, I realized that there are some points of articulation here that weren't being used. And uh, in fact, this little uh, ankle piece uh, was really just painted shut, and I ran a, an X Acto through there and was able to give that some travel, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I noticed that the knee could also move, potentially, but really this, this piece here, um, uh, the little hydraulic bit right there, is holding it from moving. So if you get a wild hair and you really want to be able to uh, position your walker in a particular way, you could cut that off and that would allow the knee more, tra or would allow it any travel, really. But it would allow it to travel, um, and then you would have the ankle and the knee, and then the hip also, all able to be repositioned, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a fun discovery, and I'm not going to do the knee on this one, but uh, it really made me think about. You know the future and what I might want to do and that actually pointed out to me this part here on the gun uh, sort of indicates that there should be some swivel uh, to this piece as well now that looks glued in place well and truly glued in place so oh and that just comes right off <laughs> I'm going to glue that back in at some point here in the near future because I don't want that to be off. Um, oh, that's interesting because now you can kind of see that piece and how it's... Uh... <laughs> there are so many parts to these. It's really amazing how many parts go into one of these models. But anyway, uh, with this piece in particular, it shows that... Um, if this were reality, this would be a pivot point for that gun, which would mean that you'd be able to make it articulate this way as well as this way. Um, so if you, again, if you wanted to, uh, you know, super detail or, and, and make, uh, make the piece really articulated, that would be another point that you could play with. And then what you're left with is the, uh, the main hull and there really wasn't any work to be done here and you know if you wanted to try and open up the hatch this is when you would do that I'm not going to do that I don't care that much about um, cracking the hatch but if you wanted to you could although I think I'm going to run a, a, an exacto into the uh, the viewport there because that looks like it, it needs a little cleaning out um, yeah, and then of course we have all of the other guns, and uh, these, the Nebelwerfers, uh, will come off of their uh, holders, and the uh, auto cannon. I don't know that I'm going to worry about this too much, um, but it does there's a point of articulation there and you can at least get it out of the way and kind of open it up this way so it's almost like flaying it open um, and I imagine though huh yeah I can probably oh yeah you can okay you can just sp spread these 
there we go yeah see so that those things spread and then the gun comes off and really that's that's how that should be painted so I've got those, and I imagine I can do the same thing with this point without breaking it, and I'm not going to do it because I'm afraid I will. Um, and then on the arm, the Ludwig arm, um, yeah, that looks like that's going to stay. Maybe. Nope, that can come out. Okay, that can come out. Good deal. Oh, so that means I can take the other one off pretty easily too. See, there's just two little pins, very shallow, holding that armor piece on. Excellent, and that gives me much more access to this arm. All right, well, you know what, in for, there, excellent, okay. See, I didn't, I didn't know how all this was gonna turn out, although I had done a lot of it uh, from the get-go. Um, all right, so what are we going to do now? The, uh, my plan is to, uh, to do a camouflage pattern. And it is going to be very similar to one that they use uh, on a lot of the boxes. And I will show a picture of that now, assuming that there was a picture there to show. Um, so I, it's kind of a splinter camo, uh, little triangles. Uh, floating around various colors and my plan is this is not going to be any kind of um, historical color I am using uh, a p3 coal black as my basis and I've used this before and I'll show you right now uh, what it looked like when I used this last time now what you're looking at here what you're looking at here is the uh, um, Bane Blade? Storm something? Anyway, this is a, a super heavy tank from Warhammer 40,000. Uh, and the colors here are based on uh, P3 Coal Black. It's not pure though. Uh, it is has been lightened with some white. And so this will be roughly my medium color on this. So I'm going to start with Coal Black Pure. Uh, then mask some of the splinter, then do the lightened color, and then mask some more, and then the light, lightest color is going to be uh, like a very light gray using the same, uh, same basic color but mixed with a lot of white. Uh, so anyway, let me go, I think the first thing we're going to have to do now is uh, cut the mask. Uh, just so that's ready. Uh, so I'm going to cut the mask and then I'll get my base coating done. So uh, when we come back, um, I will show you that step. All right, so here we are at the assembly line for creating my masks for the camouflage. And I thought this was going to be a really straightforward process, uh, dare I say, easy. Um, but it turns out not to be really be the case. Uh, I decided to just jump in and start going. And, and let me show you essentially what I'm going for here. Uh, this tape is a little bit thick. This is uh, rice paper tape, uh, I believe from uh, Tamiya. And uh, although I have about three different sizes, I don't have the size, a, a lot of the size that I thought I was going to need. So I took uh, the thicker stuff and just split it down the middle by freehand, no, no measuring implements involved, uh, and then started creating uh, essentially this pattern here because uh, I, I want a bunch of triangles and I want them to be relatively consistently sized, but they don't have to be exactly the same. So split it down the middle and then just made X's. Well, for one thing, I, I'm not following a guide like this. I, I'm just doing it by eyeball, and I don't know that you, you can kind of see the work that I've done so far, and you can kind of see, you know, like one of the ones that I pulled off here that I, when I wanted to check sizing. And then I realized that my sort of split down the middle kind of meanders along a little bit. It goes up and down, and so it means that each one of these things is a little bit different. And since I split it first, 
uh, I, I'm trying to essentially hit this target every time I cross these lines. You know, I have essentially three things that are trying to cross all at once uh, in order to get my in order to get my triangle. And if I end up here, let's see, if I end up with a line here and then a line here. Well, you can see you end up with all kinds of weird shapes, and not all of them are triangles. Um, and they're certainly not consistently shaped at all. Um, so, yeah, that's, a, that's kind of an issue. Uh, again, I'm not too worried about it. All it really ends up doing, it means that I'm wasting some tape, because I have some diamonds, and I have some triangles, and I have some rhomboids or something. Uh, and it's not as consistent as I would like it to be. And if it, if it turns out that I don't have enough of what I want, um, I'll just go cut some more, and that's okay. I got a lot of tape, as you can see. Um, but, you know, this is one of those things, like, if I'd gone through, and um, it would have taken more time, but I could have actually measured out the points, these points, right? And uh, and then hit the target every time, and then the, split it down the middle. Same thing, you know, using a ruler. Um, I would have had nice, perfect pieces. But I thought, no, nah, I'm just I'm just going to be hacking X's into this stuff. That's not going to be a problem. Well, there you go. You live and you learn. So uh, I'm going to finish this up, and then I'm going to start. Uh, oh, so I'm going to I'm going to finish this up, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to. Uh, do the base coating. So, so there. So I'll talk to you in a bit. So this is the initial base coat. Uh, this is the coal black, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I love this color, and it's so tempting to stop here and then start doing uh, uh, finish work. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go and do the camouflage as I had originally intended but I just thought I'd go ahead and show you each step of this along the way and so the uh, darkest um, triangles are going to be this color and this is going to be that first layer and so they're going to get masked now and they will stay masked uh, until all of the coats of paint are done so I'm going to go start the masking and uh, we'll move on to the next step Okay, initial masking is done, as you can see. Uh, this takes a while. Um, this actually takes quite a while. If you're ever doing, if you've never done uh, a job before that requires a lot of masking, masking takes a long time. There's just nothing you can do about it. Uh, but, I don't know, I find I can get into kind of a, a, a zen state while I do it. It's, it's kind of mindless work. It doesn't... Uh, it's not taxing at all, um, but it takes a while, and I, I, I wasn't timing myself. I don't even know what time it is right now. Maybe that's that's sort of where I where I where I've been. Um, and so the next stage here, obviously, is to uh, is to do the next coat, which I'm about to do, which is going to entail mixing up a lighter version of the coal black and uh, spraying it over the top of our mask. And just, oh, I, I don't know if you can really see it here, because the, the, anyway, the I ended up using uh, a full strip of the mask that I had uh, cut, and uh, I'm into my second strip a little bit, and I don't think I'm gonna end up using all of it. Uh, I think I'm gonna have smaller uh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to end up using everything that I cut at, when I'm all finished here. Um, but we're going to see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, I need to go and mix up some paint and get it ready to go. I also think I'm going to have some lunch. So why don't I go do that? Uh, then I'll come back, I'll mix up my paint, lay it down, and let that dry so I can get the next layer of mask on. But I'll show you the, the paint once it's down and you can see it uh, at that stage, even though it's just gonna look like another color. Um, but that's it, I'll be back in a bit. So I'm um, just about ready for the final coat 
as you can see. Um, I like this color too. This would have been a good base color. Um, but the, the final coat is going to be a lot lighter, um, a very light gray. And then I'm going to I'll pull all the masks off and stick the thing together and you'll be able to see at least what the camouflage pattern looks like pre-finishing. So uh, that will be the next step and I will see you in a minute. And here we are. So basic camouflage is done. I haven't pulled all the tape off of all the pieces yet. I just did enough that uh, I could show you the final piece um, pre-weathering, pre-detail. Uh, there's still a lot to do. This is, not, uh, this is not a simple process, but you can at least now see what the basic camouflage looks like. I, one of the fun things about doing camouflage is that um, you're never quite sure, or at least I'm never quite sure, what the uh, what the final product is going to look like when you're doing a masking situation. You sort of have to imagine it in your head and then go for it and pray. <laughs> uh, because you just don't know. You don't know what it's going to look like. So uh, I'm pretty happy. This is, a, this is about what I was hoping for. And um, <laughs> the funny thing is was, I was painting that final coat on. I was like, oh my god, this looks like baby blue. Um, but the nice thing is, once I pulled the tape, uh, that feeling went away, and it really looked uh, much more military, as, as I was hoping for it to. And once the weathering gets on, and we darken everything up, and we dirty everything up, it's going to look pretty fantastic. But uh, that's all I have time for today. I actually had uh, a couple of things I had to deal with that I wasn't expecting, and so... Uh, I didn't get as much done as I would, had, had hoped. And this actually, you know, I ended up being in the shop here a lot longer than I expected. But anyway, so the next video on this subject uh, will be on detail and weathering. So I'm uh, not sure exactly when I'm going to get to that. With any luck, it'll be next week. And, uh, and then I'm going to have a week off. There will be no um, videos in two weeks as I will be traveling to California. So that's it for now, and I will talk to you all later.